Hi, welcome back sa ating YouTube channel. If you are new to Madma TV, don't forget to click the subscribe button and notification bell para updated ka sa mga latest videos na i-upload natin. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the areas under the standard normal distribution. Paano ba kinocompute yung area ng standard normal distribution? At ano bang ibig sabihin nito standard normal distribution? So yun yung aalamin natin sa episode na to, no? And we will begin with these three normal distributions. Okay, so alam naman natin na magkakaiba-iba yung mga normal distributions. They vary from each other, di ba? Nagkakaiba-iba sila. Katulad ng nakikita nyo ngayon sa screen ninyo. Ito medyo uh, wider siya as compared to this two normal distributions. Ngayon, itong tatlong to, nagkakaiba-iba sila sa isa't isa in two aspects. Number one, yung mean nila. So, So, dito meron tayong mean na 5, and this one meron tayong mean equal 0, and this one is equal to 10. So, therefore, dahil magkakaiba yung mean nila, magkakaiba rin yung location ng center nila sa horizontal axis. Kasi we know, di ba? Alam natin na kung nasan yung mean, nandun yung center ng normal curve. So, uh, in this case, dahil magkakaiba sila ng mean, magkakaiba sila ng center sa horizontal axis. Secondly, magkakaiba sila ng standard deviation, no? So, ito, meron siyang standard deviation equals 1. This one is 3. And uh, this one is 8. And uh, as we have mentioned in our previous episodes, nakaka-apekto yung standard deviation sa magiging size or shape ng normal distribution. Pag mas malaki yung standard deviation, katulad nito, wider siya, hindi ba? Kapag mas maliit yung standard deviation, nagiging narrower yung ating normal distribution or yung normal curve. Now, itong mga differences na ito among normal distributions would actually cause difficulty in finding the area under the curve. Mahihirapan tayo hanapin yung area under the curve dahil magkakaiba sila ng standard deviation at saka mean. Okay? Dahil doon, kailangan natin i-standardize yung distribution. So, gagawin natin, i-standardize natin si normal distribution kahit para kahit magkakaiba sila ng mean pagkakaiba sila ng standard deviation, meron tayong standard na table na gagamitin para ma-identify yung probability or yung area under the curve. Now, for us to be able to understand it better, yung mga sinasabi ko kanina, let's try to consider the following situation. Suppose Zoe, Yvonne, and Sab are from two different sections. At yung section nila, uh, let's say, STEMO 1 at STEMO 2, no? At uh, yung section nila is quite large. Ibig sabihin, maraming estudyante. Okay? Now, now, let's say na yung result ng test nila, summative test nila sa statistics and probability, follow a normal distribution. Okay, so let's say normal, normally distributed yung test results nila sa, sa, sa statistics and probability. In Zoe's section, the average mean was 48 and her score was 58. So ito yung average ng mga scores ng classmates ni Zoe and siya ang score niya 58. While in subsection, the average was 52 and subscore was 62. So, okay naman. Si Zoe, Bon, and Sab are very happy kasi yung score nila is 10 point above the average in, in their respective section. So, siya naka-58 and siya naka-62. Pero yung pagkakaroon nila ng score na 10 point above average sa kanilang respective sections, hindi nun sinasabi yung naging performance nila with respect to the other students in the section. Paano nga ba nag-perform si Zoe as compared to her classmates? Paano nag-perform si Sab as compared to her classmates? Sino ang mas nag-perform as compared to her classmates? Yun yung gusto nating malaman. Pero, hindi sapat na si Zoe naka 10 point above average. Si Sab ganun din. Hindi natin makikita dyan yun eh. Hindi natin makikita kung sino yung mas nag-perform as compared to their classmates. In this figure, we can see the normal distribution of scores for each section. So, ito yung sa section ni Zoe Bon. Ito naman yung sa section ni Sab. So, as you can see, yung score ni Zoe dito, yung 58 niya nasa dulo, no? So, we can say that Zoe's score was higher as compared to the rest of her classmates. Kasi ito, mataas na ito eh. Okay? So, kukunti na lang yung nandito. So, mataas siya. No? Samantalang kay Sab, nandito siya sa gitna ng mga matataas. So, ibig sabihin, we can say na kung ikukumpara natin yung naging performance nila sa classmates nila, mas nag-perform ng mas maganda si Zoe as compared kay Sab na 
ano, medyo nasa gitna lang yung kanyang score na okay. Although mas mataas yung score ni Sab, 62, si Zoe Bon 58, mas nag-perform pa rin si Zoe. Uh, kung ikukumpara natin yung score niya sa buong klase. So, this situation tells us that it's not sufficient to know the difference between a measurement and the mean of the distribution. So, hindi sapat na, ma na malaman lang natin yung measurement tapos yung mean. Hindi sapat yan, okay? So, importante na malaman din natin yung spread of the curve or yung standard deviation, okay? So, ngayon, ang gusto natin malaman is yung standard deviation between the measurement and the mean. Gusto natin malaman tong 58, ilang standard deviation ba ang difference niya sa 48? Si 62, ilang standard deviation ba ang difference niya kay 52? So, yun yung gusto natin malaman. Nasa ang standard deviation siya papatak. Now, for us to be able to do that, we are going to utilize this simple formula. Okay, ito yung tinatawag nating Z-score. Yung Z stands for the Z-score or the standard score. So, Z is equal to X minus mu over sigma. Where X is the variable we are trying to find the probabilities for. And, um, and mu is the mean of X. And the sigma is the standard deviation of X. Very simple lang yung formula. Ito yung gagamitin natin para mas standardize natin yung normal distribution. So, yung Z natin, this is the Z-score or Z-value. What the Z-value or Z-score tell us? Ano yung sinasabi ng Z-value? Ang sinasabi niya, yung number of standard deviations, the measurement is from the mean. Ilan yung standard deviation ng measurement na yun sa mean? Okay, yun gusto natin malaman. Within one standard deviation ba? Within two standard deviation ba? Or within three standard deviation? Now, a z-score close to zero tells us the measurement is near the mean of the distribution. Kapag ang na-compute nating z ay malapit sa zero, ibig sabihin, yung score natin or yung measurement natin ay malapit sa mean. Okay? Kapag naman positive z-score, ang sinasabi niyan, above the mean yung kinumpute nating um, measurement. Now, kung negative naman yung makompute nating Z, then the measurement is below the mean. Okay. Now, let's try to consider this example. A burger chain company claims that the average mean amount of cheese on their best-selling burger is 9 ounces and the standard deviation is 0.6 ounce. An inspector orders at random in one of their stores and finds that is made with 6.8 ounces of cheese. So, umorder yung inspector. Gusto niya malaman kung totoo ba na 9 uh, ounces yung uh, on average yung cheese ng kanilang burger. Now, assume that the amount of cheese in a burger follows a normal distribution. If the amount of cheese is below the mean by more than 3 standard deviations, the company will be in danger of losing its franchise. Now, kapag daw bumaba by more than 3 standard deviations yung amount ng cheese na kinain ng inspector, na in order ng inspector, the company will be in danger of losing its franchise. So, tatanggalan sila ng franchise. Okay, now, how many standard deviations from the mean is 6.8? Is the burger company in danger of losing its franchise? Okay, so gagamitin natin ngayon para masolve na no, yung Z score formula na pinakita ko sa inyo kanina para mas standardize natin. Okay, so let's have it. Z is equal to X minus mu over standard deviation. Ano yung X natin? Ang nakuha na measurement ay 6.8 ounce, ounces of cheese. So, yun yung measurement natin. Ngayon, yung mean natin is 9 ounces and yung standard deviation natin is 0.6 ounce. Alright? So, Um, substituting it to the formula, this will give us 6.8 minus 9 over 0.6. And simplifying it further, it will give us negative 3.67. So, ang na-compute natin, Z is equal to negative 3.67. Sabi natin, pag negative yung na-compute natin, it is below the mean. Ngayon, 3.67 yung ating standard deviation. So, lagpas ng tatlo. 
Okay, lagpas ng 3, oh, 3.67 eh. So, ibig sabihin, the company will be in danger of losing its franchise. Let's proceed with example number 2. A normal distribution has mu equals 65 and standard deviation equals 7. Now, find the z-score that corresponds to x equals 48. So, gusto nating malaman kung ano yung z-score kung ang measurement natin is 48. Again, we're going to use the formula z is equal to x minus mu over standard deviation or sigma. Substituting the given values, we will have 48 minus 65 7. And that will be equal to negative 2.42. Okay, so that's the z-score or z-value that tells you the distance of the measurement from the mean. Okay, so yan yung standard deviation na compute natin. Next, for letter B, find the z-score that corresponds to x equals 71. Substituting the given values to the formula, we will have 71 minus 65 over 7. Simplifying it will give us 0 0.86. Okay, so it's a positive z-score. Ibig sabihin, nasa taas to nung mean. No? At saka malapit siya. Malapit siya sa mean kasi 0 0.86. Hindi katulad nito, malayo-layo siya kasi within, lagpas siya ng two standard deviations. Lumagpas siya ng two standard deviations. Kaya malayo siya at nasa baba. Ito naman, 0 0.86, ibig sabihin yan, uh, malapit siya sa zero, so close lang siya sa mean, nakadikit lang siya. And it is above the mean, kasi nga, positive. Now, kung pwede natin makumpute si C-score, pwede rin natin makumpute si raw score Ano ba yung si raw score Yung measurement natin yung X. Okay, so baliktad naman. Kanina, kinumpute natin si C-score. Ngayon, gagawin natin, compute natin si raw score Okay? So, we're gonna use the same formula. Pareho lang din naman. Gagamitin no? natin. So, ang Z-score niya is negative 1.50. Yung x natin is, wala, yun yung hanapin natin, yung raw score. Yung mu natin is 65, and yung standard deviation natin is 7. Alright, so yun, so substituting the values, uh, it will give us negative 1.50 equals x minus 65 all over 7. Now, multiplying both sides by 7, it will give us negative 10.50 equals x minus 65. Adding 65 to both sides of the equation will give us x equals 54.50. So, our raw score is 54.50. At ang corresponding z-score niya is negative 1.50. Ibig sabihin nun, Ibig sabihin nun, itong si 54.50, kung ikukumpara natin siya sa mean natin, no? um, below the mean siya talaga. No? Kaya nga, tingnan nyo, napansin nyo, negative 1.50 yung lumabas. Kasi nga, below the mean. Again, when we find the z-score, we are standardizing the values of the distribution. Since these values are values of a normal distribution, nanggaling din naman siya sa normal distribution, the distribution we obtain is called now the standard normal distribution. So, yung normal distribution natin, in-standardize natin using the z-score. Kaya, ang tawag na natin sa kanya ngayon, standard normal distribution. Any normal distribution of x values can be converted to the standard normal distribution. Okay, so kung ang x values mo nanggaling sa normal distribution, kahit magkakaiba pa sila ng mean or standard deviation, pwede nating standardization gamit yung z-score or yung z-value na kinumpute natin kanina. Okay, lagi natin tatandaan na sa standard normal distribution, ang mean niyan laging equal 0 at ang standard deviation niyan is equal to 1. Tapos yung z na kinumpute natin kanina, ang tawag natin doon, standard normal variable or yung z-score. Again, pag sinabi natin standard normal distribution, ang mean ay 0 at ang sigma is equal to 1. Alright. Now, ito itsura ng ating standard normal distribution. No? It's still normal distribution, but in this case, ang ating mean nga is 0 at ang ating standard deviation ay 1. So, itong portion na to, it's within 1 standard deviation. Itong portion na to, it's within 2 standard deviations. Itong portion na to, it's within 3 standard deviations. Okay, laging ganun. Pag standard normal distribution, mean is 0, 
standard deviation is equal to 1. At pwede nating i-compute. And we always have to remember that any normal distribution can be converted to a standard normal distribution. Okay, tandaan nyo na. Okay, so tandaan nyo yun. Now, nakapag-convert na tayo ng normal distribution to standard normal distribution. Na-convert na natin si x value papunta kay z, si z papunta kay x. Ngayon, ano ba yung advantage ng mga ginagawa natin? Bakit ba natin siya ginagawa? Actually, ang advantage niya is because of that, madali na natin mahanap yung area under the normal curve o yung probability natin within a given interval. Halimbawa, gusto natin mahanap Itong shaded region na to. So, let's say, yung portion na yan, actually, katumbas din yan ng probability of the random variable C is less than Z. So, lahat ng values less than Z, ito yung Z natin eh. Lahat ng values less than Z, ano yung probability niyan? So, kung ano yung probability niyan, yun din yung area natin. Let's say that is uh, 0.20. So, that is 20% probability or 0.20 yung kanyang area. Now, the question is, paano natin siya kukumputin? O paano natin mahanap yung area niyan? So, ngayon, dahil standard normal curve na ang ating distribution, gagamit na tayo ng standard normal distribution table o yung tinatawag nating Z-table. So, gagamit tayo ng Z-table para mahanap yung areas under the standard normal curve. Okay, so let's try to find some areas of standard normal curve. Alimbawa, number one, find the area under the standard normal curve to the left of z equals negative one. So, hanapin natin yung area to the left of z equals negative one. Okay, ano naman, equivalent din siya dito, no? So, probability of z is less than negative one. Pareho lang yan. So, tingnan natin yung itsura niya. Okay, so in standard normal curve, ito yung negative po natin, ang hinahanap natin is ito, itong area na to. Okay, para mahanap natin yan, gagamit tayo ng Z-table. Okay, so kailangan may hawa kayong Z-table no, para makompute natin yung area niya or yung probability. Sige, subukan natin. So ito yung example ng, ano, ng Z-table. Dito, hindi siya kompleto no, kasi... Hindi ka siya sa buong screen ko ilalagay ko. So, dahil negative yung kailangan ko, negative na lang muna inilagay natin dito. So, again, balikan natin yung hinahanap natin. Probability of Z is less than negative 1. So, ang unan yung titingnan na ito, itong first column, nasan ba si negative 1? Ayun. So, negative 1. Dahil negative 1 lang naman siya, ito na yung titingnan nyo, negative 1.00. Ayan o. No? So, yan. Yan, yung intersection niya, ito. So, this is 0 0.1587. Therefore, ang area pala nung region na yun is 0 0.1587. Or yung probability niya is 0 0.1587. By the way, itong table na ginamit ko, na itong Z table na ginamit ko ay left tail style table. Ibig sabihin, yung binibigay niyang area sa'yo o yung probability na binibigay niya sa'yo ay yung mga nasa left side ng Z value. Okay. Okay, ulitin ko ah. Left tail style table tong ginagamit natin dahil ang binibigay niyang area sa'yo ay yung nasa left side ng Z value. Balikan natin yung problem natin kanina. So, punta tayo sa problem number 2. Find the area under the standard normal curve to the right of Z equals negative 1.56. To the right of Z equals negative 1.56. Okay, so, uh, it is equivalent to this probability of Z is greater than negative 1.56 kasi nasa right siya. Okay, so tingnan natin kung nasa ang part siya ng normal curve. Ayun, nasa kanan. Okay, nasa kanan siya. So, yun yung hanapin nating probability or area. Pero gaya nga na sinabi ko sa inyo, yung table na ginamit ko is left tail style table. Ang binibigay niyang area is yung nasa left. So, kung hahanapin mo si negative 1.56 doon, ang ibibigay niyang area sa'yo ay ito. Yun yung magiging sagot mo doon. Pero hindi naman yun yung hinahanap natin. We're not looking for that. Ang hinahanap natin ay ito. So, paano natin makukumpute to? Okay. 
So, dahil alam naman natin, the total area of a normal curve is equal to 1. Alam natin yun, di ba? 1 yan. Kabuo niyang 1 yan. Okay? So, ngayon, pag minus mo to, makukuha mo to. Alright? So, ulitin natin. Dahil alam natin na 1 ito, and makukuha natin to gamit yung si table. So, if we are going to subtract the probability of 1, negative 1.56, to 1, makukuha natin yung value nito. Alright? Okay, sige, tingnan natin, solve natin. Again, so we're looking for the probability of Z is greater than negative 1.56. So, nasaan ba siya dyan? Negative 1.5, ayan na, negative 1.5, tapos si 0.6 nandito. So, yung intersection nila is 0.0594. Yan na ba yung sagot natin? Siyempre, hindi. Gaya nga na sinabi ko sa inyo, left tail style table ito. Ang binibigay niyang area sa iyo, yun nasa left. Eh, hindi naman yun yung kailangan natin. Ang kailangan natin, yun nasa right. So, gagawin natin, ima-minus natin sa 1. Alright. So, 1 minus 0 0.0594 will give you 0 0.9406. Okay? Now, let's proceed with example number 3. Find the area under the standard normal curve between Z is equal to 1.95 and Z is equal to negative 1.20. Between Z is equal between Z is equal to negative 1.95 and Z is equal to negative 1.28. Okay, so medyo komplikado to, no? Alamin natin yung area between two Z scores. Okay, so tingnan nga natin yung tura niya. Yan. So, ito yung negative 1.95 natin. Ito yung negative 1.28. Alright? So, ito yung area ang hinahanap natin. This is what we are looking for. Okay. Medyo komplikado, no? Kasi, agaya nga na sinabi ko kanina, we're using a left tail style table. So, ang ibibigay niya sa'yo ay puro negative. O puro left side na area. So, definitely, kaya natin siyang masold. Okay? So, kunin natin yung area nito ni negative 1.28. Diba? Pag kinuha natin yan, ibibigyan nyo sa'yo isang buong to eh. O, yan. Ibigyan nyo isang buong yan. Tapos, kunin mo tong area ni negative 1.95, ibibigyan nyo naman sa'yo yan. And therefore, isang buong ito, pag minus mo to, pag minus mo yan, makukuha mo to. So, therefore, for this problem, ang gagamitin natin, we will get the probability of Z is less than negative 1.28. Ito. Kukunin natin yan. Tapos, ito yung probability ni negative 1.95. So, subtract natin para maiwan siya. Okay? So, yun yung strategy natin. Okay. So, let's try to solve it. So, using the Z table, we'll begin with um, uh, Z less than negative 1.28. Nasaan ba si negative 1.28? Ayun. So, that is negative 1.003. Tapos, si Z is less than negative 1.95. Nasaan si negative 1.9? Ayun. Tapos, si 0 0.05. So, 0 0.0256. So, Subtracting the two numbers, it will give us 0 0.0747. So, that's the probability. That's the area of that particular region na pinakita natin kanina. Okay, so let's have more examples. Find the area under the standard normal curve to the right of Z is equal to 2.33. So, right na naman yung inahanap, no? Probability of Z is greater than 2.33. So, let's try to look at it. Ayan, ito yung hinahanap. Nasa right na naman siya. Okay. So, which means, alam naman natin na ang binibigay sa atin ng table ay yung left. Ito yung, pag tinignan mo sa table yung 2.33, ito yung area na ibibigay niya sa'yo. Okay? Hindi ito. So, therefore, imaminus natin siya ulit sa 1. Okay? Imaminus natin sa 1 itong probability na to. Okay? So, Let's say probability of Z is greater than 2.33. That will be equal to 1 minus probability of Z less than 2.33. Okay, ulitin natin. Para makompute natin to, 
At alam naman natin na yung normal curve, yung standard normal curve ay equal sa 1 yung kanyang area. So, at ang table natin, ang binibigay na probability ay ito. Yan, yung part na yan. But what we're looking for is this part. So, ang gagawin natin, we're going to subtract the probability of z less than 2.33 kay 1. Okay, balik tayo sa table. Napin natin si 2.33. Nasaan ba si 2.33? Ayun, 2.3. Tapos si 03, ayun. Okay, so ang probability niya is 0 0.9901. So 1 minus 0 0.9901 is 0 0.0099. Okay, let's have our final example. No? Number 5, find the area under the standard normal curve between z is equal to negative 1.33 and z is equal to 2.33. 21. Alright, so this is equivalent to probability of Z is greater than negative 1.33 but less than 2.21. Let's try to look at the curve kung nasaan siyang part. Okay, so kung makikita nyo, yung region between negative 1.33 and 2.21 is what we are looking for. That region. no? So yun yung inahanap nating area. But gaya nga na sinabi ko kanina, Yung ginagamit nating table is left tail style table. Ang binibigay niyang area is yung nasa left side. So ngayon, kung itong 2.21 ang titignan natin doon, ito yung ibibigay niya, buong yan. Buong area na yan. Tapos yung negative 1.33, itong area na to. So for us to be able to compute this shaded part, alam na natin yung gagawin natin. ba? We will get the area of 2.21. Tapos, yung area para naman sa Z is less than negative 1.33. Ayan. So, ma-minus natin siya para maiwan to. Whole minus this part, ito yung matitira. Okay, let's try to do it. So, let's begin with uh, Z is less than 2.21. Okay, so nasa ba si 2.21? Ayan. Alright, so ang value ay... 0.9864 Tapos si Z is less than negative 1.33 So punta tayo sa kabilang part ng table So yun, nasaan ba si negative 1.33? So yun, negative 1.3 tapos 0 0.03 So its value is 0 0.0918 So we're going to subtract it from 0.9864 And this will give us 0.89 64. Alright, so that ends our discussion for this episode. So actually, this is just part 1. Yung part 2 natin, magkakaroon tayo ng mga uh, problem solving and applications about the areas under normal distribution. And um, I hope na marami kayo natutunan in today's episode. So keep on you know, supporting and keep on watching para mas marami pa tayo matutunan. So once again, thank you very much for the support and for watching my videos. Pakishare na rin sa iba kung meron pa kayong kilala para mas marami pa tayong matulungang mga grade 11 students. God bless everyone and thank you very much.